bought the signs and all that, yeah. and all the blacks and all black business? I did. I didn't, I didn't get into black businesses and that, all that stuff. Do you want to? You can. But, um, let me see what you want me to talk about. Did you talk, did y'all mention, did you mention Mr. Herndon ordering the signs and all that? Yeah, oh. I did mention him, Mr. Herndon and all that. The signs and, but I will say a little bit about it, a little more about it now in life. Uh, that was the thrill of my life to work for that company. I had offers to go other places that could make twice as much money. Mina Jackson offered me to be the convention planner for the city of Atlanta, and I didn't take it. Um, I worked with Jesse Hill, who was Mina Jackson's campaign manager, and Mina was the first black mayor of a city, and it was exciting then, much more than it is now. You know, you become complacent after a while. Things are not as excited as it used to be. I just talked to my church yesterday about helping support Maynard's movie, uh, that we need to, our children and grandchildren need to know who Maynard Jackson was. He was a great mayor, and I would say the greatest mayor Atlanta has ever had. Not just the greatest black mayor, but one of the greatest mayor we ever had. If you remember, you weren't born. Were you born then? <laughs> what but for the top there. But uh, when Maynard became mayor and how he demanded, uh, a, put affirmative action out on the, on the force and demanded that blacks get their, get their due. And across this country, you didn't even hear anything about no affirmative action. We knew that it was a, a law, but it's like the law of everything else. They ignored it until uh, Maynard just pushed that and made sure that the affirmative action was going to work here in the city of Atlanta. But I said all that to say I was working with uh, Jesse Hill, who was his campaign manager. So I had an opportunity to interact with Maynard. I had known Maynard all my life. My mother and his mother were friends at Spelman. They were colleagues at Spelman. His father, Maynard's father, baptized me at Friendship Church. His sister, the oldest sister, Sandra, was my best friend. I spoke at her funeral. So I had a close relationship with Maynard Jackson's family. And I was on a committee that did the first event at the uh, Georgia World Congress Center, the first fundraiser for Maynard Jackson, which we brought in, Roberta Flack. And that was a, I never forget, Maynard was said, it was, the place is too big and I'm, I'm scared it's not gonna turn out. But I was forceful and said, yeah, we gotta have it there. That was the largest facility in the city and we had this big event for Maynard Jackson, a fundraiser, for, uh, for, uh, to raise money for his campaign. And it was a packed house with Roberta Flack. And I'll never forget when he called me up on the stage and said, I, he said I, didn't believe, I didn't believe it could happen, but look at this crowd. So uh, I had helped him with other fundraisers. And so he came back and said to Jesse, I don't want to do anything against you, but I want to offer Henrietta a job to be that convention planner for the city of Atlanta. And Mr. Hill said, it would be a compliment to me because she worked for me and I introduced you to her, but I hate to see you take her. But uh, I started to take that job, but I didn't because I know that politics changes and I felt secure at Atlanta Life, although that job was gonna pay me twice as much as what I was gonna make with Atlanta. How did I get into that? I've been telling you about something else. I started telling you about Manny Jackson that job. What was that supposed to be telling you about? <laughs> well, naturally, I think I did share with Atlanta Life was a major contributor uh, in the Civil Rights Movement with the King Center, with SCLC, NAACP, all of those uh, organizations. And if, uh, of course, Herman Russell, who uh, Manny Jackson helped him to be the big giant that he is, that his operation is now as, as millionaires. With, uh, with their business, and it did depend on black businesses. Atlanta Life helped black people purchase homes, like I bought this home, through Atlanta Life Insurance Company. And it was a divorcee, early divorcee when I got married, and wanted a house, I bought three houses. In my first house, I bought, and I went to the Atlanta Life and said, I don't have the money to to be approved through through HUD and through the other, the, what is it, uh, can't think of the name of it now, but you had to go through certain processes that I wouldn't wouldn't qualify because I didn't make enough money. But Atlanta Life did that not only for me, 
but for many single women to help them who were head of the household, to help them buy homes, men and women. So you look at homes all over Atlanta that allow life help finance with a lower interest rate than because at that time they had to go to white finance companies and they were charging them eight and ten percent or more where you could they would you could purchase a house through Atlanta Life then for five and four percent, which opened doors for them. So it took black businesses like Atlanta Life and many others. And it wasn't that many strong black businesses out there then to tell you the truth. But um, it took the black businesses to help with the civil rights movement. It couldn't couldn't have survived without it. And I have to say, Mr. Herndon was very much concerned because, and that gave Jesse Hill the leverage to seek out and do the things he did because he even went across the country and helped bail kids out of jail all over the country through Atlanta Life. Our switchboard at Atlanta Life, the calls came in, our switchboard, and I tried to get them to save that switchboard as, as uh, a memento because that's where all the calls came in for the King Center, for the student movement, for all of them. The calls were coming in through our switchboard to, you know, to let, let people know what was going on or to help them be financed in many ways. Yeah, I can't say that. Um, you know, I have some friends that, uh, and I talk about my voice is leaving me. <clears throat> I have a lot of friends that, that come from the North. Did you say you're a Northerner? And um, many of them express that they have not experienced some of the things that, oh, I said racism, like we have experienced in the South. And I, after learning a little bit, I kind of disagree with them because racism is so prevalent. As a youngster, I went to New York many times and I didn't feel any difference than what I did when I was here in Atlanta, other than they didn't have, it wasn't blatant, they didn't have white water and black water fountains. But uh, I felt it. I never forget my aunt was going to buy me a belt and my aunt, I thought she was rich, but she wasn't. <laughs> she was a social worker in New York, and she bought me all the things I wanted. And this belt was like $75. That was a lot of money to pay for a belt when I was about 12. And I wanted this belt. It was a hubba hubba belt, one of those uh, hip hugger belts. You put it on, and then it dropped all down here. And I looked at that belt in the store, Garfangles, or one of those big stores, and uh, the clerk didn't want to sell it to me. And she felt that I wasn't able to buy it. And um, my aunt turned around and said, yes, we're going to get it. But I, that experience let me know, and then there was a white clerk, that there's racism there too. And, and, uh, but here in the South, I guess it's more blatant. We could see it. But just look at what's happening in the whole country today. When you look at the President of the United States, you have a man that's standing up and calling him a liar. Have that ever happened to another president in the country? So, I mean, to say, oh, that's because it's down south. Well, that one down south, that's right there in Washington, D.C. So racism is, if I, could, if I could leave you all with this word, just know who you are and know where you came from and kind of figure out where you want to go and how you're going to get there. Because you're not going to get there being humble, and sublime to, to to white people, and I just have to be blatant about that. That you gotta you gotta fight for what you want, and we've gotta work together as a people. Let me tell you this: I was on a, a, 